So I was out here in my yard, minding my own business. It's the weekend, so nobody's here. I'm even out of uniform. And then I get a phone call from this guy. Do you guys remember him? I recognize you, out of uniform. Hey everybody, Gumby here from Lake Point Auto Recycling. He just challenged me and some of my friends to a four-man team derby. I said I would do it if he was one of the drivers because he hasn't driven for a while either. I've been retired for five years, so. About the same time. Yeah, so we it should hurt the same. It didn't take me very long to formulate who I wanted my team to be. I called Paul, he said yes. I called Robbie, he said yes. I called Rudy, he said yes. It's gonna be Gladiators of Steel versus Matt's Off-Road Recovery and Friends. And we're gonna go head to head and see if, uh, some of you know me as Junkie, the demolition derby driver that uh, would go out there to head to head with Paul Cox. Ooh, we've been going at it for years, just. Mm. Mm, yes, you have. This time I'm gonna have Paul on my side, unless me and Paul are the last two running. Not making any predictions, not making any, uh, like I'm not making any assumptions, but I guarantee you, if me and Paul are the last ones running, we are gonna take each other out. It might be the last time. Yep. Oh, we're gonna put on a show and we're gonna find a hot tub right after. Heck yeah. So, if you didn't know before, you know now that I have a long history of Demolition Derby. I've been retired for a while, but it looks like I just got sucked back into it. And that's why I've got this car. It looks like we're smashing classic cars and that makes people feel bad. And sometimes they do and it makes me feel bad, but I only smash junk, stuff that's not worth anything. This wagon that I have, pretty clean wagon. Um, you can pick them up all over this area for under a grand. So if you want one to restore, come out here to the desert Southwest and pick up a nice wagon and restore it. <laughs> what is Demolition Derby to me? I will tell you, it is a sport that I get to build and engineer, test, rebuild, test, rebuild. I love it. It scratches my problem solving itch really good. It's a really family oriented sport. We built the cars as a family. We would go to these events as a family, but it takes up every waking second of every summer. And we forces- We did one derby and then just start working on it again so we yeah. could go to the next derby. And his kids are sad though that he didn't continue. Yeah. So this is super huge that we're doing it again and the kids are so excited. I was in roofing for 12 years. After I got out of that, I got into towing. I had a tow yard, I had junk cars, I had junk trucks. That's how I got into Demolition Derby. I just had the product laying around and the event to do it. First derby truck I built was a half ton Dodge pickup truck. Built it right here in this yard. Took it to Delta to the Rabbit Rumble and I got served. It wasn't that bad. It was. So the next year, I built a new truck and I went to the Rabbit Rumble and I got served again, this time by Ryan in that big orange Ford truck. He kept rolling me repeatedly onto the berm and then he'd back off and I'd roll back on my wheels and then he'd hit me again. I don't know if he hit me four or five, six times, but I did end up with second place and I got the bug, the derby bug. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> So I went up to Eagle Mountain, I went through the truck heat, I ended up disabling all the trucks so they couldn't be fixed. And that was a problem because we had a wipeout heat later on in the show and I was the only truck running. Robert, who was the promoter, asked me to spin some donuts to keep the crowd hyped up, to give the other participants time to fix their cars for the main event. And I said to myself, uh, these people didn't pay money to see some redneck kid spin donuts in the dirt, they came for carnage. Yeah, oh my God! So I told them to lay a big old Jersey barrier out there and I was gonna hit it and jump it. Now, I didn't think it all the way through because in my mind, I thought I was going to jump it. About the instant that I hit the Jersey barrier, I all of a sudden got a vision of what was gonna happen. And that's what did happen. I ended up hitting it flipping it up, the back wheel caught it, it sprung me up, and I did a complete flip and landed upside down. And I missed the whole entire thing. She was taking kids to the bathroom, so she missed it. I walked up the ramp, 
to the crowd just going wild. And I looked out into the arena and there's Matt with his truck on the hood. I'm upside down. Upside I'm, sta down. I'm standing on Woo! Yeah. That was a good time. At some point in my derby career, um, Paul and I got invited to Morris, New York to do a demolition derby there, uh, a, a truck derby. Um, they built trucks for us out there, a couple of our friends out there. So we show up for that. We go out, totally different experience, different arena, different driving style, different kind of trucks. They run new vehicles out there because everything rusts to pieces, I guess, so there's no old iron. But anyway, that show was super fun. I don't remember exactly who won that show, do you? Now I do. This show that I've got coming up is a four-man team derby. That means there's four of us on a team versus four on another team. I did do a derby in the past that was a two-man team derby. Me and my buddy Clint Chaston, you might remember him from this job. We went up against Paul Cox and Dan Bolton, and we derbied the heck out of our trucks up there. remember who won that one though. I remember who won that derby. This guy. Some of you might know that me and Paul Cox are mortal enemies and we have been fighting for over a decade. Paul Cox is a formidable opponent. He is a good builder, he's a good driver, he's a good friend, but mostly we don't like him because he's good at building and good at driving and sometimes he beats me at Demolition Derby. So one show, he knocked you out. He did, he knocked me out cold. <laughs> he ended up winning that show, because <laughs> I was unconscious. That was actually another one of those scary moments. Real, real classy, Paul. Knock a guy out and then win the Derby. The next year I came back to Parowin, I brought my A game, I took Paul out. It was a total blowout. A total blowout in my favor. Is that the one with the two trucks that won't quit? quit? Like I said, it was a blowout. All right, that derby car is not going to build itself, so let's get back in there and get to it. Okay, Colin, we're gonna be using half inch bar here. Here, I've got them all marked out. This well goes on. It's been a while since my dad has derbied and it's a big part of our childhood or my childhood. And uh, this is the first time I've actually got a weld on one of his trucks or cars. So I'm super excited about it. It's gonna be sweet. You're well of that too pretty, man. This is a derby car. All right. <laughs> Didn't fall off. Last night, Colin and Rhett came in and helped me work till about 10 o'clock. And Colin welded this bumper on. Tom's getting all the glory because he finished it, but this is the kid right here that actually melted this bumper to the frame. It Are better you? stay. I'm doing some very secret winning stuff. Winning the poo, winning the poo. So this welding is just to keep the all thread nuts from backing off loose. So we got them cranked down really tight. And now they're uh, gonna stay there. Almost as good as Loctite. All right, we've got this back bumper put on. The back of this car is pretty much set up. Um, a little bit more work to do on the back axle, but 
that's not a big deal. So now we're gonna be moving into the interior cage. That's the safety. It protects the gas tank, the battery, the driver, and the shifter. All the most important things, huh? Yeah. The things that'll blow it up <clears throat> and the things that make it go. All right, I'm gonna be cutting the pieces and I'm gonna have Tom and Colin weld those in. I don't know how much longer we have Colin because he's gonna be heading up to Rudy's to help him work on his derby car. But we're gonna get as much done as we can, as fast as we can. Okay, now can you get yours down? Can you go from the top? All right, we've got a fun surprise. Our friends from way up north of the border. Canadian YouTubers, Gridlessness. How's it going, Matt? How you guys doing? So Jeff and his family, they're headed back to the Great White North and they wanted to stop by and treat us with a Canadian Poutine. staple. Poutine. Poutine. Yeah. So I've never actually had it. It's like gravy and french fries and cheese, cheese curds. Yeah. Okay. So I like all of those things except for french fries. So, Ooh. so tough crowd. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> no. What you have to do with poutine is like, forget the french fry part, because it's a whole thing on its own. It's okay. like a new thing. Like a gravy soup, a cheesy gravy soup. <laughs> you just have to free your mind from thinking about the french fries and just think this is a brand new thing I've never had. It's a oh, Canadian no. tradition. We're actually appropriating French Canadian tradition because we're only Canadian. Okay, well, we are in there just working yeah. away. I hope you're like so. building up an appetite. Decent Garage was here this morning and he says he left me some sort of treat in the Morver. <laughs> what size are these? He's, he also said, don't knock them till you try them. Do you yeah. think you're going to try them, Matt? Did he ask you what size I was? Oh. How does he know what size I was? I don't know. Well, here. Did he get the right, he did get the right size. I always get in trouble for the inappropriate shoe wear. So thanks Tim from Decent Garage. Just got gifted some Crocs today. Nice. You guys are gonna gift me some poutine. Yes. I'm thinking if this is a competition, you guys are looking pretty good right now. <laughs> A gift, a gift from That's them at Decent Garage. Those are way comfortable, those shoes. I have a pair of pink ones. Crocs? They're not as cute as my pink ones, but they're yeah. cute. Yeah, shop Crocs? Yeah. I can't imagine how dirty my feet would be. Face fur. Think of fur. What fur feet smell like? In case you're wondering what these holes are for in Crocs, it's a place for your dignity to leak out. That looks pretty strong. That looks pretty strong. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah, we'll see you guys later. Colin, out. Colin, so did you see it? Oh yeah. I, it's you can see I it. I can see it. <laughs> it's not to look a while. huge, but you can see Here, it. Here, we'll we'll put it down. Do you got like uh, a I telephoto lens? Yes, sir. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> what I like about it, you're the first person to ever touch it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It. You know, you can't name anything else yeah. that's precious yeah. that nobody else has seen. Yeah. Or touched. Yeah. But and it's totally unique. Yeah. Like a gold nugget like that. Yeah. Like it's just different than every other one you got. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it. I found one over in Australia. Yeah. And one in California, about the same size. Yeah. Six pounds. If you melted it down, it'd be yeah. worth about ten to five thousand. Right. As it was, he sold it on eBay for three hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, because it's yeah. unique, right? And there's yeah. a story behind each one. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Let's keep this thing going. Let's nasty stack this thing. Woo! So I'm doing what's called the nasty stack right here. Most derby guys spend a lot of time getting the angles and making everything right, so it fits and it looks nice and it's super strong. I do the exact opposite of all those things I just said. What about the strong part? The opposite. It's not super strong, it doesn't fit right. It doesn't look good. the angles match and it looks bad. Yeah. But it works? It used to. Also, it uses up all your scraps. Nothing to throw away. 
Super clean of you. Do you want to go pull the yeah. chair, the seat out of that white Grand Cherokee? Yeah. Driver's seat? Yeah. Cherokee seat time. We're stealing it from Tom. I hope he doesn't want this back. It might be a little uh, derbified after Matt's done with it. Can't snip, snip. You gotta keep it legit. All right. I have a seat. Oh gosh, it's kind of heavy. Oh, what do we got there? Yeah. All right. Should work. Okay. Okay, where's the power for this thing? Do not try this at home. You could just. Yeah, ooh, don't touch those. Those will get hard, yeah. red hot. Okay. I'll lock it down. Oh, that got hot. Whoa. Well, that was awesome. Okay, let's put this in the car. I'm okay with Jake taking this seat because this is what's needed for the derby. We got it right here. That vehicle's totaled, so it's perfect. Oh yeah. Took that guy out. Took that guy out. Took that guy out. Oh crap, it's Paul. Hi, Holly. What's up with you? Nothing much. I see you're building a derby car. We are. Are you excited about it? I am really excited about it. I actually bought tickets and I'm coming. Oh, really? Yeah, very first derby. Never a derby. But she's really into violence, so this is her thing. Exactly. I'm going to so, you know. <laughs> That's good. I learned what I was going to have for supper tonight. I was getting hungry around the valve. Ed, you got to watch that because that'll spread down into your body. Yeah. So the gridlessness crew came down. They fed us poutine. Poutine? They fed us cheesy gravy french fries. Uh, it's just amazing. That's all, that's all I can say. So, thank you guys so much. I've got a a prior engagement that Jamie made for me and I forgot about. So I've got to run, but we will be back tomorrow like this. We're just about to get something done on the derby car and then lo and behold, our good buddy showed up. What's up boys? This is Danny Ogden. He's a hardcore derby guy. Are you retired or semi-retired? I'm semi-retired, retired. I've been derbying for about 20 years. Yeah. A little over 20 years. Danny's always had one of the better sounding engines in Utah, in any, everybody in Utah, consistently. Yeah. Well, there she is right there. 377? 377. All right. How much horsepower? Should be about 550 at the crank. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with all that power. Yeah, that's a lot. Small arena, but maybe your Patagonias will hook up and you'll just fly around. Okay, we're going to get this unloaded and store it until we can put it in the car. So you should have your redundancy. <laughs> you know, you got two of them, two buttons to push start. Yeah. Oil and pressure sending you Oil pressure. You look at that when you're in a <laughs> derby? <laughs> I don't. I've had it go on and read a couple times with me. <laughs> this is my gauge right here. <laughs> if that's If that's doing certain things, I'm okay. If it's doing other certain things, it better be okay. So not only is Danny letting me use his engine in my derby car, he's helping me set my front end up. So uh, in the rules, it says that you can weld the A-arms down to get the maximum lift out of the front of the car. So that's what we're doing. All right, so Danny helped me get the front end set up. I'm really happy with how it's setting. So thanks, man. Thank you. Really appreciate so the help. We'll see you in a couple days. Yeah, Danny's coming back to help us. We need all the help we can get. <laughs>
Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Like right. this. Boom, we're back. Like, Lizzie's even back. People have been asking where you are. Where have you been? I've been doing ranch stuff. I've been riding horses and working cows, and it's been a blast. She's been riding high and fast. That's what she were trying to say. Tom, people have been asking why you're still here. Because I never left. Jake, who the heck are you? I'm Jake from Parts Unknown. Does that help? <laughs> did, that, did that help? No. All right, let us know in the comments if you know who Jake is. You know, Monday morning is always like cold starting a diesel engine in like the Yukon, right? It's painful. Just, yeah, painful, slow. slow. Yeah, may or may not happen. <laughs> so, so we're about to get ready though. So we're sending these three out on a shopping spree. They've got to get parts for this. Brake parts, other parts, transmission parts, parts. They're just going to get par boring parts. And then we're going to come back and put those parts on. You're coming with me. Okay, first stop is O'Reilly Auto Parts. I got a list of stuff I need. I got a list of stuff I need. Do you have anything you need or are you just coming along for the ride? I could use a winning lottery ticket, but I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> Riley, you <here we> come. <laughs> Matt answered hello, sweetie. He has my number in his phone. Um, what kind of oil? 040. We're gonna use these. It's a brake cleaner. The O'Reilly <laughs> brake cleaner is super good. Use that stuff like hand soap, right? Oh yeah. Real men use brake cleaner. Now four. Or more. More brake cleaner. Next we're going to Ace Hardware. It's an EJ Civic 92 to 5 right hand drive from Japan. That is awesome. I'm a Civic fan, sorry about it guys. I'm looking for a big 220 volt plug because we have something awesome arriving today. I don't want to ruin the surprise, but it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool actually. <laughs> I like plugs. Popcorn. Should we get one for Matt? I'll grab two. So this is a turbo 350 transmission that we're going to use to go behind that small block Chevy engine that's going in the derby car. This was our last stop. This came out of an old two wheel drive square body that I had for a long time. It's been sitting for like 20 years, but it ran great. So I'm glad it gets to get used again. All right, we made our three stops and now we're headed back to the shop. Thank you. All right, so we got all the parts we need to put brakes on this thing. And brakes are, are super important on a derby car. I would say on a scale of one to a hundred, they're like a three. Yep. Is like one really important or is a hundred? Hundred's really important. And these are a three? Yeah, that's pretty important. It's on the, it's in the spectrum. Yeah, I guess I made the list. <laughs> hey, look what you just got. Perfect timing. Hey, Rowdy. So Rowdy brought me the bolts that I need to bolt this axle up to the car. Are these a grade eight or a grade 10, man? These are cool. They're eights. Look at these things. I like the black. Thanks, Rowdy. All right, we're gonna take these bolts and these mounting plates and we're gonna bolt the axle to the rear suspension. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Okay, it's a little heavy in the back, but it is stable. All right, we got the rear axle installed. Now to the next thing. Cheers. I need these welded on. Okay. I need them two inch on, one inch off, all the way around. If you can't eyeball that, I'll need you to mark it. I've been assigned to weld up these wheels, so that's what I'm gonna do. So we're working on three different things right now. Lizzie's working on wheels. I'm working on bumper brackets. You're working on something. Front end that you and Danny set up yesterday. Oh yeah, we set up the A-arms, now Tom's welding them in place. Now when you're building a derby car, you gotta be careful how much welding you do. And you wanna make sure you do too much. We getting there? No, not yet. We are on our way. I welded this side, now I'm gonna turn it over and weld the other side. Out of the water. Yep. That'll work. Time for number two. Just got done welding these up. 
They're ready to take a few hits. So a lot of building a derby car is just sitting back and looking at it. You can read the rules, they can tell you what you can and can't do. To a point, there is a lot of gray areas. And what you got to do is you got to spend a lot of time thinking about those gray areas and what you can do just to get it done. So you're going to see in this video, I don't know, I don't know how much we show. If I showed everything that we were doing in this, you would see about six hours of me just going like this. And then I'll sit in a chair and think about everything I just saw for an hour. And then I'll get up and look at something else. That's kind of the way it is. Um, I really enjoy that process. It's super boring to watch. So we're not showing any of it to you. This is a rare thing of beauty. This was built by my friend Mike. He's part of the Trailmater crew out there to Moab. He brought this down to the record games. He gifted it to me. This is the first time we fired it up. The first time I ever saw it was on his channel. Uh, Dirt Billy Deluxe is what he does does his stuff on. This is crazy cool. And Jake here got it fired up a minute ago and just wanted just me to like come that. out and look at it. Oh. Look at this thing go. It's crazy. So as this gets hotter and hotter, the flame it just gets more and more intense. <laughs> and you can control the speed of it. Um, Mike says you use a rock to like control the speed. That's hot. Look at that. Exactly that part. It burns waste oil. You can run them on diesel or oil, but not gasoline. Uh, so you Kerosene. Just put oil in there and it burns it eventually. Yeah. Oh. There's nothing but oil in there. Just, just waste oil. These were invented to keep uh, orchards from freezing. So they would go out and light these things up if there was, if there was going to be a hard frost, like a killing frost, and this would keep the frost away. And you can see how that could happen. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can heat an area with that. Thanks, Mike, Sean, and Rory. You guys are awesome. Good. Both wheels are complete. I've heard Rory say this, like every vehicle is safe to roll over once. And every car is safe, safe to get in an accident once. We're trying to make it safe to get into an accident like 30 times or 40 times. Or 77 or, times. Yep, lots of times. Safe for me, not for the other guy. The other guy's in big trouble. Big, big trouble. You put one side of the tire on, then you suck the tube in. in, then you put the other side of the tire on. Then air up. Mm -hmm. 19 pounds. The rules on the bumper is, there's a lot of rules, but I know in there somewhere it says the rule, the bumper has to look basically stock. So I'm gonna make the bumper look ba basically stock. All right, it is way after quitting time. And <laughs> anyway, Rowdy decided to come over and give us a hand welding. The whole crew's gone. It's just me and Rowdy here working away. All right, to give you some perspective, Rowdy's been going non-stop for about two hours. That should give you an idea of how much welding goes into a derby car. Imagine if we were cheating it up. That would be nuts. Nuts. Right. It's not midnight, but it's not far off. We got this much done. When I say we, Rowdy did. I was just thinking and he was welding actually getting stuff done. So, Really appreciate Rowdy coming and helping me. This is Jace's brother. Jace is the one that I bought this car from. Jace is trying to tell me the problem lies elsewhere. I don't know what he's implying. You're hidden. Rowdy's nervous that... We have four days left. I know. There's no engine. <laughs> there's there's a, a whole bunch of empty right here. And that, that needs to be filled up. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be like this. Good morning. It is bright and early for me. Normal time for these guys. 
same time for everybody. <laughs> it's one <laughs> time. That's I stayed up too late last night. That's the point. Okay. All right. So Tom is now finishing this front bumper off. We just got to, what do you got? Just these little corners? Yep, going to weld these in. Looks like there was a ton of work done last night. Did you video all that? Nuts. Lizzie, what are you doing today? I am driving up to Gunnison. Gunnison. Yeah, so she's going to go see Jace. He's got some more parts that we should have picked up when we were there, and now we know we need them. So she's going to be heading to Gunnison, and we are going to stay here working all day long. On stuff. We've got five, we've oh. got like four and a half oh. days. All right. Okay. <laughs> Saturday night. Yeah, we're going to get after this. Hi. All right, we got the bumper done, tires on. We're going to set it on the ground and do the next thing. What's the next thing? Something with the back. What do you, do you want to suck it down or is that what we need? Yeah, all the Let, let's check our bumper height now, now that everything's on. Set it on the ground. Let's look at the rules and then do some shady stuff. 23 inches at the bottom of the bumper, that's the rules. Let's see what we got here. We are 19 inches. So we can't be any higher than 23. So you got a wide. I got a wide bumper. I'm pretty happy with that. You checking to see if it'll fall off? It never does. Never does. That's the max. Oh, you're there. 22 inches. 18 inches is the minimum. So I'm four inches. So if I could get this to drop down. Okay, I need everybody in here. Every single person I need in here right now. Did that go down at all? I don't think so. I don't think that moved, man. Maybe an inch. We're not fat enough. We did, it went down to 21. Yeah. So we got an inch. So I call that right we need to get a lot more people in there. We're gonna have a company lunch, picnic lunch, right here. Well, we're about Ooh. to have a meeting, so. And I'll just weld it. The meeting is here. The company meeting. How are you going to lock it down? You just leave that up to me. I'm going to figure out a legal way to hold that down. Legal. It's going to be a piece of cake. Piece of cake? What are you going to do? I, I'm not going to say it on camera. And cut. All right. I don't know how to set up car steering. I've never done it. And so I'm kind of going with a hybrid with, between what I know works on the trucks and what I think might work on a car. So this is all experimental and it'll probably take me out. So I'm asking you to do the impossible. Just weld half of this. Just weld it. Go from there down. Okay. Okay, now I need to come in here and you can weld it pretty good from the back side and from the front side and weld down here on this, this other tab right here. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this thing way down. Yeah. All right, who knows? Who knows if this is gonna work? I don't. I just want it to be able to move as the car moves without binding. And break that. Just the right amount? Yep, that's the perfect amount of play. <laughs> Not for street use. So this is the U-joint that we're gonna run because it's way stronger than the rag joint that's in there. I'm gonna cut that off. Looks like we got the right size. It fits on the splines. So we'll chop it, weld it together. Matt, can you turn the wheel as gonna, I weld? I'm gonna try. All right, turn it at welding speed. Okay. Go for it. Keep rotating, keep rotating, stop. Okay, we're all done. Ow, okay, go again. So when I first started derbing, I used to catch a lot of grief for like how I, the kind of bearings I use for my steering shaft and well, my whole steering in general. But after a couple of years, 
People would still comment on how janky it looked, but they respected it. That's awesome. Okay, let's see if I have full range of steering. All the way left. All the way right. Okay. We should check toe. We want to be towed out slightly. We definitely don't want to be towed in. I think. I, I'm just guessing. 64 and a quarter. Okay. So you towed out a half inch. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Matt, you know what we have to do with this? What? We have to test it before it goes out. I know. Do you know where we test things? So let's Slip wash. Lock. <laughs> <laughs> this has to go in the slip lock. Oh, dude. Oh, man. That has to go. That's six. <laughs> Anything that comes out of this shop has to go up slip lock. <laughs> like I said, it's time to send these guys home. <laughs> All right, we're back. It's the next day. We're in the shop. We're working on the derby car. It has just been a whirlwind. I got a little bit of flash burn yesterday. I was not feeling good. Went home, kicked my feet up, put some cucumbers, watermelons. <laughs> Had a facial? What'd yeah, you do, man? I did some stuff. Spa day? I'm feeling pretty good today. <laughs> All right. um, yeah, I got, I was like right next to a weld when I thought it wasn't going to go and I peeked around there. I only got it in one eye because I was like, anyway. It was I, my weld. I feel horrible. A flash he, burn is the worst pain in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was I, I only Sorry, got it about 20%, which is bad enough. Too that, many percent. It's just slightly, yeah. That's like losing an arm. That's what the pain is like. <laughs> yeah. I'm sending Tom to the machinist. He's okay. got to make some parts. These? have to turn into a, a piece of a drive shaft. An yeah, the, out the output on the transmission, right? Yes, so this has to get machined, this has to get machined, and they'll go together. We can drill these holes out, and, or maybe we'll use them, we'll see. That pilot's not gonna line up, but the bolt hole should. Uh, oh. Right there, that's all we need. So while Tom goes to the machine shop to get that done, I'm going to reimagine the brake system because we don't have quite enough throw on the pedal. Okay, Lizzie, will you tell me what's happening over here? The air bubbles coming out. Is it? Got to be careful. It might shoot. Hey, hey! It's Higgins. Higgins. That means Rudy's here. How you doing? Good. I hope you're happy. I hope it's working. Yeah. Okay. Because mine's not. Oh. <laughs> Am I not farther or not as far as you hoped? Um. I would say we're about uh, almost even. Yeah. I'm really happy with those. Okay. I'm just holding my finger if you just want to keep pumping. Matt's saying that we're not getting a good brake feel, so something about this is wrong. Either the master cylinder size isn't right, or the geometry on the, the brake pedal, the That's lever fair. isn't right. See you guys later. See you, Rudy. Hey, good Thank luck. You. Let us know if you need anything. Yeah, I need that thin cut. So you just need to weld that right there. Drill presses here. Yes, I told you guys there was gonna be a surprise two days ago and I was wrong. It's actually today and it's here and we're gonna go check it out. Tom thinks I'm not excited about it. I am super excited about this drill press, but I'm equally sad that we're losing shop floor space. Who cares about shop floor space? The like, guy who uses shop floor space. This right here is Ted. He is the designer of the, and the builder of the best drill press in the world. And we're gonna show it to you in just a second. Oh, wow. Look at all that. Kids that like cold starting diesels. All right, I changed the geometry on this brake pedal. Now they're working. 
good enough for derby. Now I was just saying that this is ready to go out so we can put the engine in, which is perfect timing because we could drive the forklift right in here and put the drill press over there. And all I want to do is work on my derby car. All I want to do is drill holes. Do you need any holes drilled for your derby car? No. It's like these brakes are fantastic. All right, it's driving job, nice. Matt. I didn't feel any shimmies or wandering. It was not bad. Look at the interior on this van. So Ted came out here like a month ago and talked to me and said, hey, look, I see that you're not happy with the drill press you have. I just, I drove up here all the way from the Phoenix area to show you what I've designed and built. And, and he fixed all of the problems that you have with your ordinary drill press. And he's got two drill presses set up in this van so he could show me what he's made. This was the first one in the world, the only one he's made. He showed it to me, I loved it. He said, okay, I'm gonna make one and then come back here and, and I'll sell you my second one. And so that's what we've got here today. It does feel top heavy. I was almost seeing, what if we threw like a mat strap, just right there. Just bolt the table down to the, yeah, <laughs> let's grab one. Okay. It's going nowhere. Is this a whole metric set? That's a metric set, just for y'all. That is awesome. We're gonna be drilling metric holes too. Hey, thank you. Look at this, man. Watch this. We go forward, we start. I can make the speed do whatever you want. Up to like 3,000 RPM. Crazy high RPM. And it can come down to like 50. And it has a pleasant tone. <laughs> Look at that. It can go slow. I want you to make me a milkshake on this. <laughs> We're gonna do it. Okay. Okay, we've been playing with this drill press and it's awesome. We're gonna show you more of its features, but I just wanna thank Ted for coming up here and getting it for us. This is all his design and his creation. If you want one of your own, you can check them out at allmetaltools.com. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is get this stuck in there. I've actually got some more work to do there. I need to cut the firewall out. All right. When the car starts bending and starts nosing up, it starts pressing the engine into the firewall. Everything kind of comes up and back and it'll break your distributor cap off. It can pinch your spark plug wires. It can pinch other wires. So we need to get this in there and then we're gonna pay a lot of attention to where these are routed, how they're routed, and what's gonna happen when everything goes south. Cause it will go south. And when it goes south, you want it to go good south, not bad south. All right, we got the parts back from the machine shop and we're just gonna press them together here. I'm gonna press. That's it. There it is. This is not exactly ideal for a couple reasons, but it's gonna work. We're in a hurry. We got a derby to run. We can't hit that seal. We gotta be out at least, I'd say an eighth of an inch minimum. Is that the official way to space things? Yes. That's how we're doing it today. We're just gonna stick them in there. Oh yeah, look at that. And that goes right there. Don't try this at home. I don't recommend it. You are now my favorite person. There's some really good ones in here. I didn't choose them, so if you don't like them, don't blame me. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> wow. So, Tom's so excited about his new drill press that he's forgot that we have a derby to run Saturday. Oh, let's see here, there we go. Wow. There you are, my the precious. Sim yeah. Simplest one. The simplest Just the glazed yeah. donut. Yeah. It can't be a sugar donut. Standard it issue. can't be anything, just a glazed donut. Ted. Bye, Ted. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Tom, you are grounded <laughs> from the drill press. What? Well, I didn't do anything. Exactly. <laughs> this is an outrage. Here we go. Watch this awesomeness. Start, pick my speed, 
which could be anything in the world. Oh, hang on. It's going Stop. backwards. Let's go forward. Start again. Here we go. You just gonna play well that? Yeah, the floor. There is one up we got enough there. Look at that curly cue. How's that feel, Tom? Way, way, way better. Drilling holes has never been so fun. All right, Holly, I need you to jump in this. We're gonna push this in here. I need you to drive my derby car. Does that scare you? Yeah. All right, stop. Okay, so I'd like to get the engine stabbed in here and, uh, and running. I'd love to take it for a rip today. Let's do that, let's get it running. Every derby driver I know has something really weird one time that took them out and it never happened before and it's never going to happen again but they do it then they they fix that one thing on every single car after that and then other guys that come to help them are like what are you doing this for? He's like well this one time this took me out. Yeah I've had it happen like what I'm doing right now is a drill bit and this thing on my motor because I don't want it to happen to him. Yeah <laughs> and I had a I, I broke a throttle cable um, really early on and ever since then I put enough throttle cable that my motor could be laying on the ground in the dirt next to my car And I'll still be able to rev it. There's a reason I'm called junkie <laughs> Okay, come on down a little bit. Down a little? Do you want to back any further or do you like that resting right there? I honestly always leave it right there. <laughs> it's got two things that I like. Is it sitting on this? Yeah, that uh, keeps it, that'll keep welded together. Just, it just as it starts to push up, it stops it. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 Jake. Jake. What's up? Where'd you get those gloves at? Oh, you mean these guys right Yeah, here? those puppies right there. At mattsoffroadrecovery.com. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we're going to weld the engine mounts to the frame. You would never do this in real life. This is solid mounted. <laughs> there is no rubber in the, the vibration goes through the whole car. <laughs> it's going to be rough and you'll never know. <laughs> you're, you are in sensory overload when you're driving out there. Like, I, I feel like I can hear the crowd screaming, but that's not what it is. It's just all the vibrations. Yeah. Uh, adding up. I can just hear this roar of the crowd and it's just the metal in the car. How's it looking? They look a lot better than my weld, so they should hold up. Danny <laughs> approved? I am definitely approved. <laughs> what do you think of all this, Ed? Yeah, looking good. Going together. We're getting really close to firing this up and taking it on its first ever test drive as a derby car. It's gonna be like a short little rip. That's all we need. Ed, we need an update on your neck. Oh, well, I've got till the, wear this till the seventh and hopefully I can take it off and it's all healed. Yeah. So. He went and got it x-rayed a few, I don't know, a week ago and they said it's healing good. So, Ed took a fall, hurt his neck, but he's on the mend. Gas tank, battery. This is your ignition over here. This yeah, box. this is the ignition switch. So they have a dual ignition switch. So yeah. either, so if one switch goes bad, you can flip the other one. Two starter switches. First fire. That thing is crazy loud. Woo! So I guess Tom forgot to film for a second. <laughs> I was holding the camera and trying to plug my ears at the same time. So if you got a shot of the ceiling, that was what was going on. What's that noise? I can't sleep. We're gonna back this out of here. We got some Mad Max stuff going on here. Yeah. And then just a start button. <laughs>
most power you've ever had. I've never had this much power huh? before. <laughs> you can tell by the smile on his face. <laughs> I have never had power like this in a derby car. Thank you so much. Man, when Danny found out I was derbying, when he found out that I was challenged by Gumby for this uh, Gladiators of Steel event, he calls me like, dude, I've got an engine for you. That was huge. I can already tell it's huge. We have to even playing field up a lot with these guys. We've got oh. retired guys and guys that still do it every day. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That is loud. <laughs> that sounds so good. Do you wear earmuffs? <laughs> well, with your helmet on, it's not so bad. Yeah. Is that what you thought it would sound like, Tom? No, that's it's way louder. How's the converter feel? Like a 3500 <laughs> RPM yeah, converter. Yeah, rev it a little bit before it's all right, we've got a ton of work behind us. We've still got a bunch of work ahead of us, but this is a milestone. This is huge. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome, man. Yeah. I'm so excited to watch this derby. Like, I've, I've watched a few derbies, but hearing the sound of that thing is gonna be awesome. Thanks for watching. You're gonna be fine here tonight. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>